Welcome back on the channel. Today I want to show you my first step with a library called Adult Go. It's been a while I wanted to try it out and recently I got the opportunity to build a simple project with it. The founder calls it the Python library to auto-optimize any LLM tasks. And as an engineer working with generative AI applications, it piqued my interest. So I walked through a collab notebook chart by the creator and I took on the exercise to build a chat with memory, meaning that it could restore the previous conversation, so keep in memory the different messages, and also have persistence on the disk, so if you quit and relaunch the application, you can restart the conversation. Today, I will walk through what I learned about Adalflow and share my hands-on experience as I recorded the whole session while I was trying to understand the library and build my simple project. So if you are into building applications with LLMs, you can stick around. Let's go. So what's exactly Adalflow? Well, it's a pretty cool library for developers who want to build and optimize LLM task pipelines. Think of it as a toolkit that makes working with large language models a lot easier. The folks behind Adalflow have some interesting ideas. They see LLM applications as similar to model training workflows, which influences how the library is designed. At its core, Adalflow is all about components. Those are the building blocks for your LLM tasks. You've got things like prompts for formatting inputs, generators for handling LLM predictions, and retrievers for implementing RAG. Adalflow uses the composition design pattern quite extensively, which makes it easy to change the behavior of your pipeline while minimizing the amount of code you need to change. It makes Adalflow model agnostic by default because you can easily swap out different LLM providers without having to rewrite your pipeline. The library also puts a big emphasis on optimization. So they've built-in tools to help you fine-tune your prompts and improve your model's performance over time. According to the creators, the philosophy of the library is all about keeping things simple, focusing on quality over quantity, and helping developers not just build, but really optimize their LLM applications. We'll see if that holds in practice. The library's creator shared an intro collab. It's been a while since I wanted to try Adalflow, so I started by following the first example. I created an empty Python project and installed the dependencies. Then following the collab, I noticed a nice trick I didn't know. You can use IPython display clear output to programmatically clear the output of a cell. As usual, you need an LLM provider. In this video, I will use OpenAI. So the first example is about building a question answering component that outputs structured response with two keys the explanation and the example. To handle structured output with Adalflow, you have to implement a data class that extends the Adal data class. You simply define the shape and add a description for the fields, it will take care of parsing the LLM output. Also, LLMs works with prompts, and Adalflow uses Jinja to build prompt templates. It supports loops, condition blocks, and many more features provided by Jinja. Then the creators show us how to build our first component. We create a QA component that will take questions as input and answer in a specific format. To do so, the component initiates a generator from a model client and keyword arguments, as well as a data class parser. Then the component implements two methods, call and a call, that invokes the generator synchronously or asynchronously. Then we create an object from our component. The cool thing is that we can print the component and get a detailed string representation, really helpful for debugging. Another cool utility is to use generator print prompt to see the rendered prompt template, also quite useful to debug. Our component is model agnostic thanks to the generator class. Adalflow leverages composition here, where you can pass class dependencies as object to the constructor. Then changing the LLM provider is as simple as passing another model client instance. So to put this knowledge in practice, the idea of this video is to build a chat with persistence using some database component of Adalflow. To do so, I will keep reading a bit about the rack section that introduces the core DB module. Let's move on to our chat with memory implementation. The Q example is memoryless, meaning it doesn't remember the previous messages you sent and it generated. Now we want to keep track of the discussion. The first step is to copy paste the code from the collab tutorial and verify that it works for me. So, as you can see, it works, and I managed to access the structured output using the data attribute. Then, the next step will be to adapt this example to add 
a memory component, which is able to recall the previous messages and keep going on when you send a new message to the component. I will explore a bit the local DB that we will use to add persistence to our chat. So the first thing is that you can use the local DB constructor to create a new local database. You can load a set of dicts representing data using the load method. There is an extend method to add a list of data to the database, and you can use the items attribute to get all the data in your database as a list. So the idea would be to create a database and use the methods like extend or the item attributes to build a memory for our chat. Keep in mind that it's a really simple example and we don't care about the size of the database in memory and so on. So it's practical for demonstration, but in production we'd have to be a bit uh, more cautious. Time to code. We create a class named chat with memory. It will be our Adalflow component. It takes a model client, a dict, representing the model keyword arguments, and a local DB as parameters. We change the call method to first add the user message to the database, generate the answer using the generator, and add the AI answer to the database before returning. Then I use Copilot to help me rewrite the prompt template. We need to iterate over all the messages in the database and add them to the prompt we send to the AI. To do so, we end up using a Jinja for loop, but I always forget the syntax. Finally, we quickly check that it works as expected by inspecting the database state. So we made it. We have our chat component with memory. Now it's time to make it look a bit better. We'll use Python Rich, a library to build terminal UIs with scholars, components, and more. Here we use a simple process. For each message, if it's a human message, we simply print it. If it's an AI message, we wrap it into a panel. It gives the app a better look and makes it more readable. But we are not done yet. Now we want to resume the chat even if we quit the CLI and launch it again. To do so, simply we use the local DB methods to load the database state on startup from the disk and save it after each message. We need to take care of the fact that the database might not exist yet, so we simply use a try except here. In conclusion, while my example was straightforward, it gave me a good feel of Adal's flow core strengths. I'm impressed by how it focuses on essential features and quality. I'm particularly excited to explore Adal's flow auto optimization capabilities next. This could be a game changer in the LLM tooling landscape. What truly really stands out to me is how Adalflow contrasts with my experience using Longchain. While Longchain often felt overly complicated and abstracted too much, Adalflow strikes a right balance. It doesn't abstract away my business logic, but it does help with painful parts like switching models and parsing output. I also appreciate Adalflow philosophy of quality over quantity and simplicity over complexity. This feels like the opposite of my experience with Longchain which often shipped broken components and felt like an abstraction maze. Moreover, I found Adal's flow source code quite readable and well-architected. I had to read it a couple of times, but it was much more clearer than Longchain's multiple layers of class indirection for simple features, at least when I last used it. If you're working with LLMs and looking for a tool that prioritizes simplicity and quality without sacrificing flexibility, I definitely recommend giving Adal flow a try. Based on my experience, it's a library that could significantly improve your LLM development process. See you in the next one.